Hi everyone, today let's talk about Grinder. then we'll go over the charts, and then we'll go over my results for the day and for the week, and my positions going into next week. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So I just wanted to mention that Grinder did go public today. It surged 200% on its IPO. You can see up 200% up to $36. It IPO'd around $12 and rocketed up from there. The high of day it says here was 71.51, so went up really big, up almost 400% at one point. Of course, it is a low float stock, so it can be pushed up and manipulated fairly easily. But then it came down to that $35 range. Match and Bumble were both down on the day, so you can see. So there's potential that this could be a stock worth trading in the future. I generally stay away from IPOs for at least a little bit to see where they stabilize. It's hard to do technical analysis on these kind of stocks when they're brand new. They also used a SPAC to go public, so it started right around that $10 range. You can see all the way up to almost 70 and then settled back into that mid-range. Who knows, maybe Grindr will be the next dating company that you should be investing in, but it's definitely one to pay attention to. It does have stiff competition in Match Group, and Bumble is the second largest player in that industry. Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&Ps on the daily chart, you can see this wedge is starting to narrow. Looks like we're going to hit right into that range. Might come up a little bit short of it, actually. Looking for one more solid push up, maybe a slightly higher high next week. And then I would expect that to fail, and then we would get a move back to the lower areas of this range. I don't necessarily think that we're going to make new lows. I think the lows might be in, but I would be looking for a double bottom style process in here at 356.70. At some point in February of next year, January into February, I would look for this to bottom, create that double bottom here on the S&Ps. But right now, next week, maybe slightly higher week, and then we get the breakdown. But who knows, this could fail from here. It definitely was not great. If you look at it on the weekly chart, you do have that doji of indecision, similar to what we had down here in October and what we had right here in August, demonstrating those bottoms and tops that we've had in the markets on the weekly chart. So this certainly could be a reversal candle. And we could look for lower lows here. I would be kind of surprised if we didn't at least get a touch of the upper portion of this range at that 4100 level. But I do expect this to turn down at some point in the next week or two. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the daily, not quite the same structure. We did have a lot of sideways movement in the last few days. Did almost touch that 144 EMA on the daily. Not even really that close to that upper line that we've had here. But that could just be because the NASDAQ is a little bit weaker than the other major indices. You can see momentum is cooling off here on the daily chart. Wouldn't be surprised if we got just that one more push higher next week. That's kind of what I'm anticipating. The weekly chart, once again, you have that doji. And this certainly could be a point of turnover. And it'd be hard to argue that the NASDAQ doesn't make new lows. I think the S&Ps might hold its bottom with the NASDAQ making new lows. But it is worth pointing out here that momentum is slightly bullish here on the weekly chart for the NASDAQ. And last time we got a slightly bullish indicator, it was right here. It was right here in July, and we had a couple more weeks of solid bullish movement of where we are right now in terms of being in this channel that we've had, which would correlate with one more, maybe two more weeks of upward movement before we get that cool off and sell off. Moving over to the Russell, this still looks significantly stronger to me. We have this solid bottom here in July, did not break that bottom here in September, and then moved up quite a bit up to that 190 level. We're above all the major moving averages here on the daily chart. Moving to that weekly, it was still negative on the week. We're still struggling with that 200 EMA. And we have the 55 EMA slightly above that actually here on the weekly chart. And it's worth mentioning here that this double bottom that we created here in the Russell is actually below the highs pre-COVID. So the Russell in time and space is actually in a much lower position than the other major indices. They are yet to test these pre-COVID highs which the Russell already did, and it seems like the Russell is going to be a little bit stronger here, at least in the short term. Moving over to Chewy here on the daily chart, you can see we did touch the upper portion of that range, the one we've been in since the highs, but this bottom seems really solid. We have a low, a higher low, and one more higher low. Wouldn't surprise me if we came down into this range, maybe 38.50 or so, at least touching this 9 EMA here on the daily, which is currently at 39.62. So another $1.50 or so of downward movement. Retest these highs again. You can see we've been touching them. 
But it would not shock me if this breaks out to the upside after the huge sell-off we've had. We have to remember that these growth stocks are down 80% to their highs and still 65% to where they are right now. And Chewy has been one of those companies that fundamentally is performing quite well. Based on that, I think in this range is still a decent buy for Chewy, even if the major indices are going to head down in the next two weeks or so. Moving over to top gainers, we have XLP on the daily chart. Huge move higher, broke out of this bearish wedge, looked like a bearish wedge, but we broke out to the upside. We'll see if this continues into next week. Definitely looking like we're getting into that range where we've been failing here previously. XLP continues higher, can potentially hold up the markets a little bit longer, but at some point this is going to roll over. And that's probably when the S&Ps and the NASDAQ are going to roll over as well. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply. This is definitely a good chart to watch. And what this is telling you is that this rally is over. We hit that top indicator multiple times here in March. Again, got just above it here in August. Got above it slightly again here in November. And it looks like we're fading off. This rolls over and we move back to either new lows or back to these previous lows. You can obviously expect the SPX to move down as well. You can see momentum is slowing down here on the daily chart. Haven't gotten that cross. And really, to me, this is saying that we've already hit that upper limit versus the SPY chart, which hasn't hit that upper trend line yet. But it seems like the M2 money supply is telling us that we are done with this short term rally and that we're going to be moving down here next week. Even if we slide sideways, kind of like we did here, where we had a couple of days, a retest and then a continuation down doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to go straight down. You can see even here we had a mid rally of a couple of days and then a bigger move down. So still could go sideways slightly just for a few days, maybe even get a retest. But at some point, this is going to break down and I would expect to get to at least this previous level, which is currently at the 18% ish level. Moving over to the dollar, DXY also showing us that we are done with this rally. The dollar over the last two days has rallied. And it looks like it's got at least another day or two before we get to this 9 EMA. And then I would expect it to break through that maybe slowly, but moving higher here in the dollar, probably to retest this region up here at 108.05 or 108.3 or so. Either way, a higher dollar is bad for stocks, and it looks like the dollar is going higher over the next week or two. Moving over to JNK on the daily chart, you can see we've been going sideways for quite a few days here does look like we have a solid bottom in at about 87.50 or so, $88, somewhere in that range. And I would be pretty surprised if we got down here and broke through that level, but it definitely wouldn't surprise me if we got back down here to retest. And that's why I think the NASDAQ is going to move down, but not necessarily going to make new lows. I think if we get back into this range, we find support, even if the NASDAQ is moving down and even if the NASDAQ does make new lows and JNK holds at this level, that would be a pretty good indicator to me that we're going to get a reversal pretty soon in the NASDAQ, especially if we see JNK turn up off of this bottom and the NASDAQ is still moving down. That's going to be a pretty good indicator that it's time to be entering back into the NASDAQ. Moving over to TLT, you can see we had those few big days of rally, hit that 55 EMA and went sideways for one doji and then moved down here today. So not good on TLT. Looking like this rally that we've had in stocks is going to fail. TLT is definitely starting to turn down. And if TLT continues down, that's going to be bad for stocks. And we should expect money to be coming out of the market overall. So you see DXY heading higher, bonds heading lower, and that should lead stocks lower as well. Finishing up here with the VIX, you can see we had a big red bar today, surprisingly because the stocks were pretty volatile today, but finished basically unchanged. I guess that's why we're getting downward movement and volatility. But again, seems like we have a bottom in here at $23. At 23, we tested it several times, throwing those wicks, big red bar and retraced immediately, came back into that range, same range we were here in September. Momentum is definitely slowing down. Seems like we're gonna get that upturn here in the next day or two, if not first thing on Monday. So be aware of that. Stocks are probably going to go lower and be prepared. Moving over to my results for the day, down $185. Definitely should have made more money today. My IRA was up 205. So getting pretty close to break even once again on the year. 
This is where I struggled. I overtraded a little bit and I should have left my positions on a little bit longer. I rolled up too early in the day. I thought we would dip in the morning like we did, but get a continuation to, into the afternoon, which we did. It just took a lot longer than I expected and we went lower than I expected, which was unfortunate. And because of that, I wasn't able to profit, even though those positions would have been profitable if I had held on to them. I just didn't think we were. I was just concerned that the dip that I expect next week was coming a little bit early. But otherwise, positions for this week, I do have one here in Chewy, which seems to be holding up quite well. I did pick up a 182 put here on the Russell, and then a 281 and a 282 here on the NASDAQ for Monday. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of Grinder. Is it going to be a good stock? And how'd you do on your week of trading? Definitely a choppy week, so don't feel bad if it didn't go well. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video, and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.